What's up, friends? We did it. After months and months of development, we are finally happy to publicly release our new After Effects physics simulation tool, FISM. This tool provides a simple interface for creating animations that have gravity, collisions, magnetism, and other physics-related properties all inside of After Effects. It's simple enough to get started in just a couple of clicks, but you can create some pretty powerful simulations using this. We wanted to create something that's just simple to use regardless of a user's skill level, and we could not be happier with the results. So if you're looking to create some beautiful physics simulations all inside of After Effects, then let's jump in. All right, so we're inside of After Effects here, and I have this new composition open that has a shape layer tower and a ball inside of it. And on the right, I have the FISM tool that I just opened. You can see that we have some keyframes going on on this ball here, but let's go ahead and just select all of our layers and click on Get. FISM is going to build the scene inside of our viewer here, and it's also going to show all of the layers that have been imported on this bottom left panel here. Now, if we go ahead and just give this another quick preview, as you can see, we already have a nice little physics simulation going on. We even have the keyframes being imported from that ball. And if we're happy with the results here, all that we need to do is just click on apply. FISM is going to add a new null for every single shape layer that's inside of our scene. And it's also going to add in this FISM save data that will allow us to access this simulation later on. Go ahead and give us a quick preview inside of After Effects. Super simple, really easy to get started, but now let's go ahead and jump into some of the different parameters that we can play with inside of FISM to control the simulation. So if we go ahead and select one of these layers, we can do that either through this layer list here or by clicking directly on it inside of the canvas. Uh, we can change various parameters that are associated to that specific layer. So we can choose the behavior, we can change the restitution, which is a fancy word for bounciness. We can change the density, the friction, the attractor, which will Will allow us to add magnetism or repel objects away and then we can also change the air resistance we'll come back to these parameters more in a bit below that as i mentioned before we have the layer list and this is going to be all of the layers that have been imported from after effects FISM is going to import all of the layers that we have selected inside of our composition and those will populate inside of here next to that we have the viewer and below that, we have the timeline controls. So we can scrub through our animation here. We can go ahead and restart it. We can toggle it to loop. And we can also go ahead and change the duration of our simulation from here as well. If I wanted this to be eight seconds, we can go ahead and set this to be eight as this is in milliseconds. And now the animation is going to be eight seconds long. To the right of that, we have the world controls. And these are going to be parameters that control the entire physics simulation. So we can go ahead and increase the gravity here. We can add uh, different walls to the simulation that will be around the composition. So right now, the default is to just have this floor wall. But if we detoggle this, you can see that everything just falls through, but we can also set walls on the top left and right as well. Below that, we have parameters for the wall friction and the wall restitution. And then below that, we have the buttons for getting the selected layers inside of our After Effects composition and then also applying them back into After Effects. Great. So let's pop over to a new composition here, and I'm just going to select all of these shape layers, click on get. And as you can see, the animation here isn't super exciting right now, but let's dive into some of these layers to bring it to life. So I'm going to go ahead and let's click on this pad here. And then while holding shift, we can also select multiple layers inside of our viewer. And I'll select this pad down here as well. I'm going to set the behavior of these to be static. And now, as you can see, these aren't moving anymore. Now let's go ahead and let's select all of these boxes and set them to be dormant. Let's go to the layer panel here. And while holding shift, we'll just go ahead and select all of these. As you can see, it got the ball there as well. So I'm going to hold command or control and click on that. And now we have all of the different boxes here selected. I'm going to go ahead and set these to be dormant. So dormant means that the objects are going to appear to be static until something collides with them. So since there's nothing colliding with them right now, they are appearing to just stay as static. So let's go ahead and fix that. I'm going to go and click on this ball here and let's crank up the restitution. Again, another fancy word for bounciness. And this is going to allow us to have the ball bounce off of this pad here, ricochet into the boxes and start knocking them down. So maybe we want to crank that up a little bit more, maybe like 0.7. 
Sweet, super cool. Now let's go ahead and crank up the density of this ball. We want it to appear to be a little bit heavier than the boxes inside of here, so it knocks a lot of them down. So maybe we'll set this to be like 0.72. And as you can see, now it's like colliding, going straight through most of those boxes as well. Now maybe these boxes are sliding around too much, so let's go ahead and select all of these again. And then let's go ahead and crank up the friction here. Last thing I'm going to do, let's go ahead and let's click on this pad down here and let's apply some type of negative force to it. So it's going to repel objects away from it, kind of like a fan. So we'll go ahead and bring this attractor down maybe to like 2,500, negative 2,500. And as you can see, now these objects are being repelled away from this box. But we can go ahead and crank this up to be even higher, maybe like negative 4,900. Super cool. Awesome. Maybe we want to add some walls to our simulation here. So we can go ahead and just click on this left wall. And then let's also do the right wall as well. And if we're happy with our simulation, all that we need to do is go ahead and click on apply. Again, FISM is going to add all of these null layers to our composition. Also that save data layer as well. And go ahead and give us a quick preview. Awesome, super cool. All right, so popped over to a new composition here, and this time let's play around with some text and some characters inside of our FISM panel here. If I pull up the keyframes, you can see that we have these position keyframes on all of these top characters here. And the way that keyframes work inside of FISM is that we use the keyframe data inside the simulation until that last keyframe, and after that last keyframe, we allow the physics of the simulation to take over. So I don't really have any animation going on. As you can see, I just have these keyframes, but because we have these position keyframes here, the objects are going to remain static until that last keyframe. So let's go ahead and just select all of these, click on get. FISM is going to build our simulation. And as you can see, we have this like kind of sequential falling of these top characters here. And that's because of the keyframes that we set up on those layers here. Because after this last keyframe, the physics properties are going to take over and gravity is going to pull these down. So let's go ahead, I'm going to pause that, and let's select all of these bottom characters here. Click on this top one, hold shift. Uh, looks like it missed the A and the O. And let's go ahead and set these to be dormant. So now these characters below are going to stay static until an object collides with them, which in this case is going to be the letters right above them. And again, we're having that sequential falling of the layers because we have these keyframes set up down here. The last thing that we want to do, as you can see, we have like kind of this magnet layer coming down and we want to have this magnet layer scoop all these up and bring them outside of the scene. So let's go ahead to this top layer here, click on magnet, and we're gonna go ahead and set the attractor here, maybe to be like 20, let's do 2,900. Go ahead and give us a play. All the layers are falling down here, super cool. Now this attractor layer is gonna go ahead and scoop them all up, bring them up top. Maybe we wanna crank this up a little bit more. All right, so 3,300, let's see what this one looks like. All these layers are falling down. Now this thing's gonna come and scoop them all up. Awesome, I love it. So let's go ahead and click on apply. Again, FISM is going to add all of the nulls inside of our composition here. And let's go ahead and give us a play. All of them falling down, looking great. Comes a magnet, scooping them all up, bringing them up top. Awesome. Done. All right, so in this next demo, as you can see, we have this kind of space asteroid scene, and we have this rocket ship over here on the bottom left that I'm trying to shoot inside of this scene and kind of knock around some of these asteroids. I've got these position keyframes set up, but the rocket ship isn't actually coming onto the screen right now. We're just going to use the momentum of these keyframes to shoot it into the composition. So let's go ahead and select all of these. As you can see, I disabled all the walls for the simulation. Click on get, let's go ahead and decrease this uh, duration a little bit, maybe to be like 4,000. All right, so as you can see, the rocket ship is coming on here, but the gravity is pulling all of these objects down. So let's go ahead and let's set this gravity to be zero. Cool, so now we have this rocket ship coming onto the scene here. It's knocking around some of these asteroids and they're floating around as if they're in space. So let's go ahead and I'm going to set the density of this rocket to be a little higher so that it kind of goes through some of these asteroids with more ease. Go ahead and crank this up to be like point, let's do 0.54 here. Cool, so it's going through, knocking around some of these more. Maybe we can even go a little bit higher. Let's do like 0.778 here. 
Awesome, so now it's really going through, looking really good. The last thing I wanna do here is go ahead and select all of these different asteroid layers and let's crank up the air resistance. I know that's not really how space works, but just for this demo, I'll show you guys kind of how the air resistance will stop these objects from moving once they've been collided. So let's go ahead and set this to be like 0.05. Sweet, so now these are kind of like coming to a rest much more quickly. Maybe we can go ahead and decrease this if we want. Maybe bring this back down to be like 0 0.0. Let's do 0 0.01 again. Awesome. Yeah, so that's looking really cool. If we're happy with that, we can go ahead and just click on apply. Going to build it all inside of After Effects here. Perfect. All right, so one last quick demo here. As you can see, I've got this box that contains all of these little objects. And if I scrub through my timeline here, you can see that it spins around and at the end, one of the sides opens up and I kind of want all of these objects to spin around in here like a washing machine and then come spilling out. So if you notice, I've got all of these different walls as their own layer here. And if we wanna have like different sides of a wall open up and be keyframed, they need to be their own layers. So I'll go ahead and let's select all of these layers click on get physics going to build our scene here so as you can see I still have the gravity at zero and I don't have a floor here so let's go ahead and fix that maybe we want the gravity to be like right here let's go ahead and add in that floor as well probably even crank the gravity up a little bit more sweet so as you can see, the box kind of crumbles at the end here, and that's because we ran out of keyframes at the end. So if we wanted to have this box retain its integrity and kind of stay intact without falling apart and inheriting the physical properties of a scene, we can go ahead and just add in another rotation or keyframe value at the end here. And now select all of these, click on get again. You can see that things are staying intact here. So if we're happy with that, we can go ahead and just click on apply. Again, applying straight into After Effects, super easy. Everything's ready to go. Give us a quick preview. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. FISM has been in development for over a year now because turns out developing a physics simulator isn't that easy. But I think the tool hides it pretty well. As you can see, it's pretty dang easy to use. And I only covered a few examples of what you can do with a physics simulator. I can't wait to see some of the examples that you guys come up with and really push this tool to its limits. FISM is included in the plug and play catalog, which includes like seven other different really powerful tools for After Effects. And it's less than 15 bucks a month. I mean, the comparison physics tool out there is $250 so you're getting a lot of value between FISM and our other badass tools as well and we're just going to keep adding tools to the catalog we've got some really cool ones in development right now I can't wait to share some more details but yeah but the list of After Effects tools is going up so get your butt over to plugandplay.app sign up and start getting access to our growing list of After Effects tools for a price that's less than your DoorDash order um but thanks so much for watching I'm Danny with Plug and Play uh, peace.